ESPN's exclusive live coverage of the PBA Toledo Open is brought to you by Geico. A 15-minute phone call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. By Uniroyal, the official tire of the PBA Tour. Uniroyal tire is trusted by American families since 1892. And by Dexter, bowling, golf, and casual, we have the right shoe for you. Very impressive fans. I thought Halloween was long since over, but these guys are ready to go. The 120th PBA Tour Stop in the great state of Ohio's history. Welcome back, Dave Ryan, Randy Peterson with our entire crew. No left-hander, Randy, this week in our final five. Still very intriguing. Maybe the most interesting field we've seen yet. I agree. You know, we have Amleto Monticelli, who's a Hall of Famer. Danny Wiseman, who's sh sure to be a future Hall of Famer with 10 titles. Steve Jarrus is both 300 on television. Patrick Healy Jr., he dominated the qualifying, he led the qualifier. And Chris Johnson, a rookie on the tour, making his first telecast. And we can't wait to see him because he throws the ball so hard. Very impressive with a rev rate for Chris Johnson. Pattern C, speaking of C for Chris, has been challenging today and all week for the bowler. Confusing for me, but we're on wood surface, and when you bowl on a wood surface, you're going to have a worn area called the track. That's where the amateurs play. What happens is the players are going to try to be feeding it to that track area. But we already saw one guy get it right of there. If you get it right of there, it's going to hang. The players will migrate left. The guys with the bigger hook, they'll be further left throwing it to the same spot. 149 events since we have not had consecutive tournaments without a 300 game. All the way back to 97 out west. We're certainly not going to get that here today. Jarris coming off the open frame. Time to think that over. And you see the numbers through six. Back to Healy Jr. Found the pocket a little late. And the 10 pin stands for him. Patrick Healy Jr. is crossing so many boards from right to left. With that soft ball speed, his ball is actually losing energy when it hits the pins, and that's what's causing him to leave a flat 10. And he's so good with his hand, Dave, he's got to try to find a way to make that ball skid flip a little bit more as it's going down the lane. Powdered C, Randy's been all about adjustments for the bowlers this week. Look out. Missed it. Oh, my oh, goodness. That one. It's commercial break. Earlier in a graph we showed you about open frames and missed single pin conversions. Healy is bitten by the bug. Patrick Healy Jr. does not like to throw a plastic ball for spares. He doesn't like going from one ball to another. He likes to throw a strike ball. A plastic ball wouldn't have hooked by that. The ball he's using is an aggressive ball. Didn't get it far enough to the right. It hooked right by it. Jarris had his open in the sixth frame. Now it's Healy Jr. trying to respond. That's the way to do it. Off the open. A strike in the seventh for Patrick Healy Jr. You can see how much harder the change of direction is on this shot here because the ball didn't hook early. It still had energy when it got down to the back part of the lane and therefore got rid of the 10 pin. Steve Jarris tells us. As with all the players, in his opinion, the all exempt tour next year on his mind. On his mind now is a nice strike on lane 42. He'll run the pro shop back home in Wheaton, Illinois, at the center where they've got the J and J bowling pro shop. Mom Helen runs the shop as well. All the books. The guy running the shop while Steve's on tour is like, Steve, come on, you got to start bowling better, otherwise I'm going to be out of a job next year. <laughs> That's Jake Wolfman, and I'm sure Jake is watching right now. Randy, on lane 41, here's Steve. He's rooting him on for sure. Big strike. Yeah, he cured that one. A good time, too, taking advantage of the strike of the seven. He doubles up. Real simple type of game here. Shoulder-high backswing. Does most of his tricks with his hand at release. As bad as he was feeling a couple of weeks ago on tour, physically, he's got to be feeling really good now, both physically and mentally. And he rebound a little high with a nice strike on the last frame after his open. Lane 42 has been trouble. And here's the dilemma that Patrick Healy has. 
at the angle that I wanted. He goes flat 10. He tries to get the ball to cut harder into the pocket, and it goes high. Needs to take a big move left with his feet on that lane, throw the same shot. I'd move about three or four boards with my feet and two boards with my target. Covers well. Big spare of Patrick Hill, Jr. March to the PBA World Championship, which takes place not far from here, Ypsilanti, Michigan, the Eastern Michigan University campus, probably an hour 15 from where we are here in Toledo. The top eight get seated all the way through. We don't have to do any kind of qualifying. On the line, 25,000 points to the winner, $40,000. How many pesos would that be for Patrick Healy Jr. back home in Mexico City? Like uh, five million? <laughs> <laughs> That's no. about that. Conversion rate. There's a good one. Here's that one on lane 41. 60 feet to success and a big ball for Healy Jr. Patrick said that when he's back home in Mexico City, he pays about 20 pesos a game for practice. And I asked him, well, how much is that U.S.? He said about a buck 50. His wife, Teresa, one of the top female bowlers in Mexico. She competes internationally. Just last week in Honduras, Patrick was there in Central America to watch her in person. He watches Jarris get a break and a trip seven on lane 42. This is every bowler's friend right here. Watch this. Tickles the head pin, gets the light swisher. Right now, the best Patrick Healy Jr. can do if he strikes out in the 10th is 206. Steve Jarros can shoot 233, and right now he's going at a 213 pace. All he has to do is mark in the 10th, and he'll shut out Patrick Healy Jr. Open frame in the 6th. Really killing Ooh. Patrick Healy Jr. However, this ball... Make it easy, do you? <laughs> gets down 6, and Steve realizes making things a little more difficult on himself. Yeah, and if you ever want to, like, you know, get a mark in the 10th frame to win, you don't want to leave the bucket. The 2-4-8-10. A couple schools of thought. You can try hooking it into this spare or just throwing it straight and hard at the 2-5. Spare and eight pins, he's a winner. But first things first, got to cover the bucket. Perfect ball. With his spare conversion ball, Jarris takes care of it. Made, made it look easy, but... <sighs> you can get seven with every ball in your bag, too. Yeah, but seven's no good, Steve. You need eight. Yep. Made it look easy, but, you know, the pressure for next year's exempt field, trying to get into the Tournament of Champions, uh, the top eight for the March to the World Championships, trying to make the bucket, well, that's not a real easy thing to do. He told us last night there will be times when he steps in the approach on TV, maybe like this one. He knows it could be his last go-round on television, but not today because he's through to the semifinals. Perfect ball at the perfect time for Steve Jarrett. You're right, Dave. He just can't throw it any better than this. Watch the six go to the sidewall and just carve the ten out. First show of the year. First of many, hopefully, for Patrick Healy Jr., who, as he tells us, speaks almost perfect Spanish. Jarrett is through. Easy. Speaking of Spanish, Amleto Monicelli, one of three languages he speaks, along with Italian English, from Venezuela. We'll hear from Amleto later today. Patrick says traffic is difficult to get used to down in Mexico City. Nine pin up there, however, the cultural enrichment he's experienced in his life, unforgettable. Chris Johnson, the rookie, first ever TV appearance, and obviously first appearance on TV against Danny Wiseman, who's won 10 titles. This should be a fiery match to watch, folks. Thank you. Wiseman told us last night, he better be ready, because I'm going to bring my A game, and we'll find out what happens in that other exciting semifinal. Jarrett is through already. He'll take on Emleno Monicelli, the 0-4. 